Welcome to episode 16, part six, the final part. Predator Bay is going live. We are back outside for the last time on this build. If you remember, we started out here at the end of February cutting uh, wood for the foundation for the stand uh, after work. So it was dark, it was ice and snow, it was cold. And now we are finishing up the plumbing for the protein skimmer, the very last part of the build. Uh, back outside on the heat of June with the bugs, you know, biting, <laughs> all that good stuff. But it's all worth it. Predator Bay right now, even without fish in it, it is amazing. <laughs> I can sit there and look at this empty tank and uh, really enjoy it. But no, seriously, uh, I'm gonna, this is gonna be great. I cannot wait to get the fish in here. So before we get to Predator Bay going live, we gotta finish up the build. So uh, let's take a look at the progress made on the protein skimmer. Okay, the protein skimmer, the Super Reef Octopus. Uh, it is in place, it is plumbed in. Uh, it's on its recycled pallet stand. It's got its bucket to drain the skimmate so we don't have to uh, be changing, you know, taking this off all the time. We'll just drain it down into here and then we'll just empty the bucket. And I see we got all the plumbing in. We got Schedule 80 PVC and we take that all the way back over to that third chamber right over here and that's where we're going to be returning the water that's been skimmed and it's going to go back to the aquarium. Over here we have our emergency drain and for some reason you need to empty out the skimmer if it's overflowing you just twist this little knob right here and that's going to send the water down this tube and that's going to go into our middle chamber. Uh, that shouldn't be used uh, ever but or definitely not often but uh, that's where that will go. And then lastly, we have the feed pump over here. So this is going to go down to our first chamber. You see right now, I just have the tubing stuck out. I'm working on the uh, placement of the feed pump, but it'll be right here in the first chamber. And we'll take the, uh, the plumbing, the tubing here, and we'll connect it up, get it clean, get it nice. Uh, and uh, that's it. I just have a uh, the pump from this, this is obviously a skimmer I've had for a long time and used on different builds. So I've got the pump soaking since it kind of got all mucked up and it was dry for a long time. So if I can get it working, then I'll be putting it back on. And if I can't, I'll get a replacement. It's just a quiet one, 4,000. It's about a $70 pump, so it's not too crazy as far as breaking the bank. So if, if the one I have doesn't work, there is a solution. Uh, we can uh, move on. But uh, yeah, that was. this is the last piece. All right, sorry, it is hot. <laughs> um, this is the last piece of the uh, equipment, the plumbing to go into place, the protein skimmer. Um, and really at this point, uh, Predator Bay is gonna be ready to, to move over the live rock, uh, the seated media that we have down in the sump for the 1500 gallon system and the sharks and rays. But before we get there, let me catch you up with everything I've done on the tank because it's come a long way since part five and not just the protein skimmer. Okay, Predator Bay is looking bright. We have lighting. We have tops. We have a fully covered top with nice slimline lighting that in general you don't see too much, doesn't stick out. We've got our wave making pumps on each side of the tank. 13 and a half feet this way we have another one creating lots of water flow in the aquarium. We have fully covered all of our raceway chambers, all of our sub chambers, all the way through. We are covered up. So as you can see, Predator Bay is ready for the next step. We have tops, we have lights, we have pumps, we have covers on the filtration system, we have a skimmer that is almost ready. We have electrical going over here. So we've got our pump controller mounted, we've got our light controllers mounted, we have our wave punker pump, <laughs> wave maker pump controllers mounted. We have battery backup for the pump. We have surge protection and timers. So we have, we have checked all the boxes, covers, lights, filtration, base rock, almost a protein skimmer, cycled media, cycled live rock. So we are ready. 
uh, Predator Bay. Once the protein skimmer is on and functioning, I will show you that. And then, uh oh, if I didn't know better, I would say that looks like a fully functioning Reef Octopus 6000 making skimmate, making bubbles, not leaking. Looking good, looking good. Returning, yes. So that means, if I'm not mistaken, I think we just checked the last box for getting the fish in a Predator Bay. So stay tuned for part seven. No, just kidding. <laughs> I would never do that to you guys. All right, it is time. It is time for me to get the bathing suit on and get into the 6,000 and get that live rock out of there with hopefully not getting you know, molested too much by the fish. They, uh, sorry, it's really hot in here. I've been <laughs> working all day on this. Uh, the, the fish just think they're gonna get fed anytime I go in there. Even if I climb in the tank, they're not afraid of me. They're all over me. Uh, it's kind of funny, but uh, they're getting bigger. So it's, you know, I'm not saying scary, but you know, it's not quite as funny as when they were little. So get a little dicier, but at any rate, uh, I need to get the, uh, get the trunks on and get in there and get that going and get it moved over to Predator Bay. And then we can introduce the fish. Whew. All right, back to work. Whew. The uh, aquarium main towel is getting a workout today. Okay, Predator Bay is ready for fish. We have protein skimming, we have main filter system, we have wave makers, we have uh, lights, uh, lights on timers, we have tops, we have it all. We have base rock in there. It is time. It's time to move over the seated uh, media from the sump in the 1500 gallon down into the sump on the Predator Bay. And it is time to get the live rock from the 600 gallon into Predator Bay. And then it's time to introduce the fish to their new home. Predator Bay is live. All right, it's the part I've been looking forward to all week. Taking hundreds or, well, actually 750 pounds of live rock out of a four foot deep tank, putting it into a trash can on wheels, taking it over to Predator Bay and putting it into there. Man, I can't wait to do this. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, well, it's all worth it. Let's take a quick look at the boys. Well, but there's the reason we do it. They're swimming around their home, but we have bigger and better things for them, and I think they're gonna love it. I know I'm gonna love it. I think you guys are gonna love it. Uh, so let me stop procrastinating and get, uh, get this rock in there. Oh my God, this is gonna be some work. <laughs> All right, five minutes in, we're on to plan B. The 600 gallon is gonna get a uh, 450 gallon water change because uh, it is too darn deep for me to reach and get all that big heavy rock, but uh, we're making it work. Man, this went already. I haven't even been in the aquarium yet. All right, so here's where we're at. We have a big bucket full of live rock. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stage that live rock up here on top. And uh, then I'm gonna be taking a, uh, a dunk. So uh, time to hoist 700 pounds of uh, live rock onto our staging platform. So there's been some questions about uh, how do you aquascape a tank like Predator Bay. And honestly, it's really just like any other tank. Uh, you simply put on your swim trunks, uh, you get a step ladder, preferably a six foot one at least. Uh, you stage seven, 800 pounds of rocks on top of the aquarium. Uh, and then simply just climb inside and then, you know, walk around, submerge yourself, put the rock and just rinse and repeat till it's all done. Uh, really just standard aquascaping uh, techniques, uh, at least, it's what I do for anything, say like 40 gallons and up. So, you know, just the basics. But let me get this done and uh, then we can get the fish in here. All right, after a uh, nice refreshing swim in uh, Predator Bay, I have uh, some of the aquascape in there. Well, most of the aquascape, but uh, definitely not the final. Let me, uh, let me show where we're at. Okay, so as you can imagine, that was a super chore, uh, <laughs> moving all this over and getting it in here. Not easy to aquascape from uh, practically underwater, but uh, it's a good start. Uh, this is certainly not uh, the, the final. There's a few more rock in there, but all the fish are clustered around it, so I don't want to stress them out too bad. So what I'll do is I'll catch all the fish, introduce them to the Predator Bay, and then I'll go back and finish off uh, this little part of the reef over here. I have some uh, gripper guys that I can, I should be able to put the rock in from the top without having to go back in. But we have the, this will be the main kind of cluster on the right. And then on the left, we'll have the two. This is one area and we have the channel between it and the other area here. Uh, there's gonna be 
uh, a rock here to block some of that to create make that look more like caves and you know uh, have some smaller pieces which I'll put near the bottom to sort of you know give it a more natural look less of a pile and more of a you know more realistic look same with really same with all this small pieces around the bottom just to smooth the edges of the aquascape uh, also uh, I'm gonna double check that one that looks a little precarious up there I think I was looking from the other direction but uh, I'm pretty sure it is on there uh, strong or, or firmly I should say uh, the sharks are strong and I've definitely uh, I check and I push them down and make sure they're they're pretty strong um, but keep in mind uh, not an easy ordeal so uh, the chance of me tweaking the design in here is, is definitely a possibility but we'll see how it grows in and uh, again once the other pieces get filled in it usually uh, looks a lot better than the first crack but I think it's time to uh, catch some fish and uh, introduce them to Predator Bay. Okay, enough swimming and uh, playing with rocks. I think it's time to catch some fish and uh, introduce them to their new home, Predator Bay. All right, her first moments in Predator Bay. She is really getting to stretch her fins. She's just cruising the whole tank, checking out uh, all this new territory. Um, Actually a little surprised she's at this active uh, after just being in the tank for a few minutes. But uh, hey, who wouldn't be, right? You're in a whole new tank, a whole new aquarium system, all this extra room, you gotta explore. Okay, we'll let her get settled in some more and go get the uh, the ray. All right, it's about 10 seconds in and the Hal Ray or California Ray is checking out her new surroundings. Uh, Definitely, I think she's gonna enjoy this giant deep sand bed and 1,800 gallons of swimming space. Uh, she's inspecting the uh, overflows to make sure they're doing well. Horn Shark is continuing to uh, check out the new surroundings. Predator Ray is coming together. <laughs> what a marathon evening. Oh, this is like five hours of uh, taking down the other tank, getting these guys situated, getting them acclimated, getting all this stuff moved over. You know, getting them moved over, what an undertaking, but uh, one time deal. Predator Bay is here now, and now it's just a matter of uh, fine tuning it, getting this aquascape tweaked, uh, build out the livestock, and just uh, get the system rock solid uh, and completely uh, dialed in. Now, you know, you know me, uh, I like to bring a little more to the table than just, you know, moving over the two fish you guys know about. So. How cool would it be if I'd actually been growing out another shark for the last few months? A new friend for these guys that I haven't told you about. Well, maybe uh, I should uh, go get that shark now and uh, introduce him to Predator Bay. Let's check it out. Okay, there is our new shark friend. It is a brown banded bamboo shark. Uh, Got him as a little baby and been growing him out the last, uh, wow, I don't know, probably three or four months. It's been a while. But uh, <clears throat> another uh, doing great with the other fish, with the horn shark and the ray. Uh, very cool shark. Uh, great at maneuvering around through all the rock work and everything. Definitely been enjoying having uh, the bamboo shark for the last few months. And super excited to see him in Predator Bay. So now we are Two sharks in a ray in Predator Bay. Uh, never get tired of uh, seeing the sharks cruise a big tank. It's definitely awesome. Happy to see so far. Again, this is, uh, for the bamboo shark, this is literally the first minute of uh, the bamboo shark checking out Predator Bay. Uh, the ray, the Halorai ray and the horn shark, they've been in here now for probably uh, 10 minutes or so. and. Uh, they're already settling in nicely. Uh, I spent a lot of time over the last, you know, month uh, taking, you know, water back and forth, seeding the media, you know, obviously bringing over all this live rock, doing everything I can, making sure the water uh, chemistry was the same, switching water back and forth between, you know, putting all fresh in here, using that to change off the other ones, so, or uh, taking trash bag or trash can of that water out and then adding another trash can of this into there and then back and switching it back and forth. So uh, hopefully it will pay off and we will have a super smooth transition. Uh, 
for all my babies here. I wouldn't want to have uh, the sharks uh, and rays and, and everybody be, uh, you know, stressed in any way. I want this to go as smoothly as possible. It's a big undertaking. There was, there was a few nights where I thought, okay, let me go ahead and get this move started. And then I was like, nah, you just got to be, you got to be prepared. You're in for a haul. This is uh, many hours of uh, work <laughs> getting this done. But now it's really starting to, to be worth it, seeing these guys swimming around. Uh, it is definitely, definitely, definitely cool. But speaking of cool, you know what would be even cooler? What if I'd secretly been growing out a really sweet looking grouper fish and I was gonna bring that fish over right now? All right, I don't know how excited the uh, grouper is gonna be on, be on camera. Not that excited about being netted and moved over, but uh, that in the cave there is my blue line grouper. Uh, so uh, my three favorite groupers are the Mediatus, the blue line, and the uh, peacock or blue dot grouper. And uh, was able to find, that's been uh, not that easy to uh, source fish lately. A lot of places just don't seem to have everything in stock, but I was able to uh, pick up the blue line grouper and uh, also have had the blue line grouper the same amount of time as the bamboo shark. So few months and been doing great uh, big time eater um, but uh, I find with the groupers they're not quite as easy going as the sharks and rays when you move them around they you know they they get a little spooked uh, again this this grouper has only been in the aquarium for uh, just a minute I mean literally like 60 seconds so and, you know all intents purpose fish is doing great and it's gonna take a minute to settle in I just wanted to get a little bit of Quick footage, you know, right as the uh, fish went in because... Okay, so as cool as the bamboo shark is and the blue line grouper, uh, it's nice to have a surprise at the end of the video, but would it be even cooler if there was yet another grouper? Another one of my favorite groupers. Let's check it out. Okay, just seconds into the aquarium, there is the Miniatus grouper. Found a nice little cave to chill out in and uh, acclimate, uh, it's definitely always kind of a, a rude thing to do to tear down somebody's habitat and net them and put them in a bucket and acclimate them and then move them to a whole new habitat. It's very understandable that uh, it's a little bit stressful, but uh, looking beautiful, just such a beautiful grouper. Um, cannot wait uh, till the grouper gets larger and uh, has all the room in the world now to cruise the reef and uh, be a true big reef predator. Okay, it's been a long night. We have a new shark, two new groupers, and you know what would be even cooler? Not just kidding you, that's it. That's everybody. All right, after a marathon session of uh, aquascaping Predator Bay, we came back the next day and we finished off uh, with the rest of the rock work from the 600. Uh, let's take a closer look. Okay, so we built up the uh, on the right side here, kind of this large uh, cluster of uh, caves and rock here. And then we have that nice big channel down the middle and then two separate clusters of rock. As you can see, the fish are all enjoying the new aquascape. Uh, tried to make it look a little more natural, you know, putting some rocks on the edges, just sort of uh, smoothing it out, I guess, trying to make it look less man-made and uh, a little more natural. It's gonna obviously look better when uh, all the base rock that we put on gets grown in on and everything like that. And then hopefully we'll be able to do something along the lines of macroalgae, maybe very simple corals, things like that to actually make it look like a, a true reef. Um, but as you can see, the, the fish are just, just loving it. And uh, we have a couple large areas here of rock to a big cluster here. So, And then of course, plenty of open space. So you might think that uh, the caves are big and everything, but you have to remember uh, all these fish get really big and uh, when they get really big, they need big caves. All right, I think uh, even more interesting than the aquascape is uh, see if these guys are interested in uh, something to eat. Uh, we have up here some uh, shrimp and squid, and we're gonna put some in there and see if I can get this on camera and uh, see if anybody's hungry. And, oh, I'd say the Miniatus grouper is hungry. He's got himself a nice big piece of shrimp. Let's see who else. Let's go with uh, another piece of shrimp. And let's see if the blue line grouper is hungry. Ooh. 
All right, you definitely don't have to ask the groupers twice uh, if they're hungry. Let's uh, let's get some squid. Let's get some squid and see if we can uh, find any hungry sharks or rays. Looks like we have a taker with the uh, California ray. He's positioning that squid, getting it lined up with his mouth. We're at, up. Oh, a little bit of shaking, but I think he'll get it in there just fine. Well, while he works on that, we'll go ahead and grab another piece. Let's see, let's do uh, a piece of shrimp and see if we can get the uh, bamboo shark interested. Let's see, where is the horn shark? He's usually the first one up, but okay, here's the bamboo. Oh, <laughs> let's see if he, uh, I think I prematurely dropped it off the stick. He better hurry, and the Minneapolis is gonna get it. <laughs> what a pig, what a pig. And there he goes. All right, that's fine. Let's uh, let's get another piece. And this time, uh, I'll do a better job of not dropping it off the uh, the tongs. Okay. All right, who hasn't been fed? The horn shark or the bamboo shark? Let's see. Here he comes. And of course, he turns away. Uh, we'll get that scent in there and uh, he'll pick it up soon enough and uh, hopefully actually well <laughs> what he's doing is he smells the food that the the grouper has and he's going in the cave there trying to get a piece of the grouper's food but we'll see if we can uh, get him out here and give him his own piece see we'll go with uh, a piece of squid for the sharks uh, they like the shrimp but uh, they really like the squid so uh, Let's see if we can uh, get them over here and like, give them a chance to smell it. And I see that the groupers are also wanting a piece of the squid as well. Uh, I feel like those groupers are going to get huge fast. They are, they are some serious pigs, uh, no doubt about it. They definitely put down some food. But we need to get, uh, we need to get the sharks their first meal of the night. And then we can go back and feed the other fish. And of course, he's nonchalantly cruising around. I think we'll pick up the horn shark here. Yep, there we go. And he will munch that down. And let's find a smaller piece of squid for the bamboo shark. And we'll see if we can uh, get him fed. Then we can go back and start uh, doing a little more broadcast feeding for the other fish and just let them double up. And there we go, just like that. The bamboo has his first piece. Let's see if, uh... all right, here comes the ray, and there's a piece of shrimp for the ray. He's got himself a little squid and a little shrimp so far. Uh, let's see, we'll go with uh, another little piece of squid, I think the uh, bamboo shark. Could certainly use another piece, and he agrees. <laughs> Munching down another piece, and definitely the horn shark. We'll get him a big piece, because he is uh, he's a serious pig. All right. So we get him to come around, let him get a whiff. The ray doesn't get it, and... Oh, nope, yep, there we go. It may look too big, but he will he will shred that thing up and he will eat it no problem. He's got serious jaws and he can certainly uh, put away the food without any problem. Same with the ray. The ray uh, he'll 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 shred stuff, move it in and out of his mouth, and uh, he can really take down larger pieces. It doesn't have to be you know small or anything like to fit his mouth. Though, as I say that, the horn shark is just carrying his food around in the distance, but uh, he will certainly uh, chow that down. So the ray will puff up over the food to control it and he'll run it in and out of his mouth and sort of tear it and thrash it and break it apart, take it up to the glass there and he'll start to, to rip that in half and uh, get it lined up and then he'll definitely uh, be able to eat that. So you can see here this big mound of sand and you can see where they've cleared out under there 
um, <clears throat> all of these guys. The uh, so everyone knows that Ray's will you know submerge himself into the sand and sleep and everything, but both the groupers and the sharks they move a lot of sand. They will you know turn backwards with their tail and they'll excavate. So you definitely have to be sure when you're putting the the uh, aquascaping down to uh, make sure that uh, they they can't undermine it with their digging and topple it down. Uh, my very first scape in the 600, they did topple a piece of it. Uh, fortunately, with no problems or anything, they were just build it back more securely but uh, a major factor these guys not only are they large and they bump into stuff um, but they will they will dig quite a bit they are they are serious diggers all right that was a long time coming as you can imagine uh, big projects like predator bay six parts uh, it's a huge effort uh, but it's just awesome that it's live now uh, and now rather than focusing on building the aquarium we can focus on really the fun in my opinion the funnest part which is the evolution of the aquarium so even though the it's a healthy aquarium with healthy fish and it has a long ways to go there's a lot of things that are going to grow in there's a lot of growing to go with the fish there's a lot of maturing with the system there's a whole evolution of this aquarium to come and i just can't wait to you know take video of that as it goes on and show you guys how this evolves how the fish evolves how the tank evolves and just plain out enjoy the tank i mean it's it's a blast I really love this tank. Uh, I knew I would, and it's it's better for me than I even thought it would be. I, I just I just love it. Um, hopefully, you guys are enjoying this aquarium as well. And uh, stay tuned for future videos on the 3,000 gallon and the 1,500 gallon system. Because keep in mind, we just emptied out a 600 gallon, so we need to fix that. <laughs> that needs a new aquascape. That needs new fish. That needs a new everything. Uh, and obviously, obviously that's tied in to the overall 1500 gallon system and there's been a lot of change to the 265 in wall So yeah, I think we need a video on that. We need to see where that's going So if you have any ideas for the 600 right now the tentative idea is the reef slope uh, with the larger uh, reef fish and simple corals uh, That are safe for larger reef fish. That's the plan. But if I hear anything better, you know, I'm always up for uh, good ideas Hey, as always, I appreciate you guys checking out the video and uh Predator Bay is live. It's about time.